And hello and welcome everyone to the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. And Matt, I was really not expecting this late into December, almost at the end of the year entirely in this hell year that was 2020, that we would still end up probably delivering the biggest episode of the year this late in the game. But we're here. It seems fitting. It seems fitting like that 2020 would culminate in this uh, and probably some other ho horrible heinous shit that's gonna come out soon um as well um because it's 2020 as well you can't have something good without something bad happening no 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 that's always the way it is but uh, i want to thank everyone for coming and joining us here for what might end up being the last quote unquote regular show of the year matt and i were just looking over the schedule here and we're thinking next week is the 20th so we're probably gonna do something fun and christmas themed we're probably gonna pick a bad christmas movie to watch i got a couple in mind and depending on how we can skirt uh different copyright laws we might stream it we might not so if we don't have a live show next week that's why yeah i, I was thinking i was thinking i i tweeted it out to you we got to do that that lifetime movie about colonel sanders oh. with uh was it mario lopez <laughs> i saw that i saw it was either going to be that or it was going to be that like mexican santa claus movie or mm -hmm. like santa claus versus the martians or rhapsody street kids like some something fucking terrible that no one gives a shit about to give us a copyright strike on i think i think hallmark might actually care a little <laughs> bit but only a little bit i need a little bit <laughs> A little bit. Again, I, I'm sure we talked about this in weeks past, but you know why Hallmark makes these movies so quickly? Because they will literally take submissions from, from anybody, anyone, yeah. including KFC. Yeah, yeah. I got a bucket of KFC not too long ago because I had a craving for it and I hadn't had it in years and it was literally burnt. <laughs> I, mean, I, I make my own because I've got an air fryer. So I just like mm. coat chicken and just chuck it in and it cooks it up real nice. Nice. I have an air fryer on my Amazon wish list, actually. And as we get closer to Christmas, maybe someone will give me the gift of frying, which I think is kind of like a backhanded gift where I'm like, hey, Jill, good job with the weight loss. But also, here's an air fryer, you fat fuck. It's a little bit joking. it's a little healthier, though, because it doesn't mm. it doesn't do it in the fat or anything. It drains all true. the fat out of it. True, true. And hey, speaking of that, I'm glad you were able to segue me there so well, Matt, our sponsor for the month of December is still livefitfood.ca. They make all sorts of pre-done meals to fit any lifestyle. For me, they set me up with a hundred bucks worth of keto meals for this month. And uh, after just a couple weeks, I lost about five pounds without awesome. really doing anything. So yeah, I feel really good about that. And you know, now I'm justified in picking out for Christmas dinner, which is what I always <laughs> wanted in the first place. Uh, you can actually get a hundred bucks from them now too, as part of a special promotion they're running with the Cape Joel Instagram uh, feed. Uh, we're recording this Sunday night. It'll be up Wednesday. Around that time, I'm going to try and be dropping, uh, what is it, something on my Instagram. Uh, be sure to leave a comment there. Uh, you can comment whatever you want, and I will pick a winner, and then I'll set you up with the company, and they, too, will send you a voucher for 100 Now, unfortunately, that's only for our Canuck friends out there. <laughs> so for all the other Americans and everyone else, sorry, they are a Canadian company. International shipping ain't that about a bitch. Usually it's the other way around, yep. but now you get to feel the sting of it. So if you're Canadian... <laughs> and want a hundred bucks worth of pre-made food there you go and in this post new year's thing when you've spent all your money anyway on gifts and everything it would be nice to have like a week plus of food you don't got to worry about yeah absolutely so there's that everyone and i'm glad i remembered this time because last week i didn't remember till the end of the show <laughs> yeah. that we had a sponsor <laughs> don't don't no one tell them <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, we have an absolute shitload of news to go over this week. The big Disney investor call was uh, early uh, this week, and uh, the floodgates opened. And just hey, man, do you do you like movies, Matt? Do you like TV shows? Do you like interconnected universes and you know recognizable brands? I do, I do. I also like content for for streaming services that don't mm. particularly have a lot of content aimed at me. Yeah, do you like streaming services with lots of stuff to watch as to justify your purchase of said streaming <laughs> services? <laughs> and so you don't feel like you're getting screwed over every time you forget to unsubscribe for them for a month? Because <laughs> that's how they really get you with laziness, where it's like, well, I could cancel my subscription, or I just couldn't. Yeah. 
Well, there you go. The the mouse giveth, Kevin Fage giveth, and oh boy, do we have so many things. We have like 30 things here to cover, so, you know, if we don't end up talking about what we read this week, which I doubt we will, you'll know why. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's quite a fair bit. Quite, I was putting the there's, list together, and I'm like, really? That was all of that? Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. So, no time like the present. Let's hop right into it. And again, thank you, Matt, for not only running the show, but also putting this list together for me. I didn't trust myself because I knew I would forget <laughs> something. I Don't worry. I, ca- I like, doubled and triple-checked it and everything. And just, like, did I miss anything? I didn't miss anything. Good. <laughs> there you go. And before we even get to that, uh, some DC news, actually. We'll start off with a little DC news because, hey, they did stuff this week, too, DC and Warner Brothers. And perhaps the biggest uh, thing they did this week... Uh, was actually surprised some people, but not surprised me, because I think we both knew there was a 50-50 here. Mm-hmm. They finally said who the future state Batman was going to be. John Ridley's new big African-American Batman that they're all excited about. And, uh, hey, it's not Luke Fox like everyone jumped the gun and assumed. It's Timothy Fox, who got name-dropped at the end of that special Joker War prelude. Yeah, and I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure that we, after we saw that preview, we're like, okay, he's... He's going to be Batman or or like it's going to be a shared role or something. Right. But yeah, it, it was kind of obvious. That, but I'm really surprised they actually announced it because I was sure they were going to yeah. keep it until that first secret. Issue. Yeah, they shockingly had managed <clears throat> to keep this secret for a very long time in a day and age when nothing is kept secret <laughs> anymore. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Timothy Fox, for those who don't know, is one of Lucius Fox's other kids. Uh, he's been crisis in and out of existence a couple times, <laughs> along with a bunch of other of Lucius's kids, but, uh, Ridley clearly remembers and dropped reference to him at the end of that Joker War Batwing story, and, uh, I can only assume, but, uh, the way Timothy was presented back in, like, oh, jeez, I think it was, like, the 70s or something, he was kind of the more rebellious, politically mm-hmm. outspoken son, he was the guy who would constantly give his dad shit for working with the man, man, for working with the Waynes, and, like, he literally called his father an oreo yeah which hey (laughs) black on the outside white on the inside for those who needed me to spell it out to them and man the idea for that guy to be the batman of the future and what do we know about future state batman some evil authoritarian force called the magistrate has taken over gotham so he's literally going to live the dream of fighting the man man (laughs) he is he is and um of course um people aren't happy that bruce wayne's not batman anymore but he is because he's still yeah. operating as Batman. Yeah, read read Dark Detectives, you dumb fucks. It's like <laughs> it's like some people are so racist it has their brains just like short fused. <laughs> They're like cannot comprehend Batman, black person. I can't even see that Bruce is over there because a black man is Batman. <laughs> it's all those people who lost their shit when freaking uh what is it there was a black stormtrooper. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck over yourself, everyone. <laughs> Personally, I'm really interested in this. I'm actually more interested now than I ever was before because it is part of this future state thing. And also because I've really started to become a massive John Ridley comic fan, actually. He writes some good shit. He does. And if this is anything like his other history of the DC universe and unlike any of the other stuff he's written, this is going to have some social commentary and some bite to it that you normally never get to see with Batman. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to all the future state titles. They all seem really fun. Same, 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 same. Absolutely. There looks to be some new new and interesting stuff here, and I'm sure the idea is, is that if any of these new characters serve to be popular or end up gaining any sort of cult followings, don't be shocked if they get their own imprint or if they get rolled in to what DC is doing. Well, we're already seeing that with the, the new Wonder Woman. They, she's, they're going That's all true. out on her. Yeah, they're literally calling their shot on that one. They're like, <laughs> this one will be popular. We know it. She already gets a show. <laughs> Which, shit, if you are going to do that way, you might as well do Timothy Fox on television. Again, people would write a lot about it, and it would be a huge deal. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Might as well do it. Again, I mean, shit, just look at what Marvel is doing. We're seeing them really reap the fruits that they planted years ago when it came to future-proofing their universe, youth-proofing their mm-hmm. universe... And, you know, uh, what is it, accounting for all the different demographics and everything of the movie going public. So it's like, yeah, hey, wouldn't you love to be able to make Black Panther money with your next Batman movie? Well, you yeah. could. Yeah, you could. You could. I mean, racists will lose their minds, but who gives the fuck what they think? Yeah. 
Plus, they're all busy right now anyway, those mm. races. Just just open your Twitter feed. They're all really busy right now. Yeah, they're busy making cringy fucking political oh. videos. Oh, Dan Crenshaw. Man, see, I knew about Dan Crenshaw for years because of the big kind of feud he had with Pete Davidson yeah. on Saturday Night Live. You heard about that, right, yeah. Matt? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Davidson, like, made a completely innocuous joke about him saying he looks like a hitman in a budget porno movie. And then Dan Crenshaw got all pissy. Yeah, I'm a veteran. I lost this eye in war. Da, 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 da. And so, like, NBC, as they often do, totally clammed up and made Pete Davidson apologize to him on air. And then we found out Dan Crenshaw was, like, actually covering up, like, a bunch of sexual assaults and everything in the military. So I, I haven't watched the show that aired last night when this news came up, but I really, really hope Pete Davidson comes out and says uh, i'll accept your uh, apology any day now <laughs> yeah you freaking dime store solid snake motherfucker you. <laughs> that that video he put out did look like a porno didn't it look like it a did. porno without it the did. sex yeah it, all the scenes all the scenes that don't have the sex in it <laughs> yeah you know the worst part <laughs> but uh yeah so there's tim fox's batman really interesting you know what i know like we were kind of indifferent at future state at first but like the more i kind of hear about it, i'm like you know what yeah i could read some more interesting dc stories yeah yeah lord knows i'm not reading that much dc now as it mm -hmm. is and what i am reading i think is a little boring so yeah bring it bring it on yeah well it's all a little bit boring because it's all coming like ramping up towards the end to come into mm -hmm. future state for the next two months yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, what else we got after that? Ooh, we got some Superman news I'm sure you're pretty excited about. Matt, tell us tell us all about Lois and Clark and what we got coming from there. Yeah, no, uh, well, we got a, a picture of the new costume, uh, which looks fantastic. Looks real good. I miss the red trunks, but the rest of it pops so much, I don't miss it that much. Yeah, it looks great. And there's there's been, I didn't put them in here, but there's pictures of, of him on set in it doing like stunts oh. and stuff. And he looks exactly like um ben oliver's iteration of superman i don't know whether you've seen Ooh. ben oliver's superman but it looks exactly like him i'm sure i have somewhere it's bright and shiny he doesn't look like overly puffy or anything they're mm -hmm. not like trying to exaggerate his musculature yeah yeah he doesn't look like he has to walk sideways through doors he looks like and uh, he looks fine as clark as well yeah looks uh i i, I get a real kind of like dc rebirth vibe mm -hmm. almost yeah yeah yeah, looks looks solid. I am very excited for Lois and Clark. Really, just the new CW stuff in general. They they came out. Uh, what is it with guns blazing for everything they're uh, planning to do? And they're basically they've uh, again kind of shown us what the next couple of years of their series are going to look like. Yeah, and it's even better with like this show. I'm, I'm sure it it might be the same with a couple of the other DC shows, but this one in particular. Apparently, WB are pumping a heap of money into it because they got the VFX mm. people that did. Uh, that do work on um the marvel movies and like falcon and winter soldier and witcher and all that doing all nice. the vfx vfx for this huh wouldn't it be crazy and i i think this has every chance in the world of happening that tv superman becomes the superman of this generation yeah that'd be great <laughs> I mean, it has every chance in the world, and I mean, CW, I, for, love it or hate it, I think CW has already nailed down the iconic Flash of this generation, mm -hmm. like, that's just is how it is, like, that character is now indispensable, and yeah, even Supergirl, too, I'll say. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. She's never been yeah. more relevant than she is now. <laughs> Shocking to think, yeah, so, uh, that's looking pretty good, so yeah, I'm definitely excited to check that out, and man, isn't it just nice to be excited about something superman related again it is and it, yeah it's nice to have a superman that as you said isn't like like big and and like roid freak and like scowling and standing mm. in the rain and it's constantly dark and everything it's nice and yeah not trying to be something that superman mm -hmm. isn't the most inventive amazing outside the box this show has it's like what if we just do a show with lois and clark and they're married and they love each other and he fights crime as superman <laughs> get out of here with that shit joel <laughs> <laughs> no for once they didn't do that for once they're like you know what that's just crazy enough to work you're you're a fucking madman jenkins but we'll do it <laughs> We'll do this. I don't know if America's ready for a guy who's just good and nice all the time. I don't know. <laughs> and whose power doesn't corrupt him, but instead vindicates him. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, there's your heap and helping of DC news right there, everybody. And from there, buckle in tight because it's going to be the Marvel Star Wars uh, <laughs> Disney hour because that's where we're going now with it. That is, yeah. And uh, you can tell Matt put this together, too, because he put all the Star Wars stuff first. Uh, our first big piece of news here is we got a little bit more insight in that Obi-Wan show, which is still moving along at a good clip. But perhaps the biggest piece of news we got from this Obi-Wan uh, show is that Hayden Christensen will be back reprising Vader. OK, I'm I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally fine with that. I, I wonder why now of all times, maybe it's one of those things where like he saw the Mandalorian and he saw Boba Fett and he's like, but, but, but I want my character to be redeemed too. But, but, but I don't want people to say I was one of the worst things about Star Wars forever. Bring me back. I'll come back for a streaming show. I'll do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as well as like, the, there's obviously a tie with the story that it's telling with Obi-Wan since mm. um that's like the last moment they they left each other they weren't on good terms and there's, there's a story yeah. there with Obi-Wan having to kill someone who was essentially his brother on and son really yeah yeah in a lot of ways and uh, I mean the fact that they got Christensen back too you gotta figure well we're probably gonna get some flashbacks right of him and Obi-Wan together and not in the suit, assumedly, because why would you get the same actor if you were just going to put a fucking helmet and a well, voice modulator well, on? Well, they did that in Revenge of the Sith. He was in the, the Darth Vader costume for that. So, for the short amount of time he was in it. Yeah, they, I mean, they could do that. And yeah, it's, it's the way it sounds like, the way Kathleen Kennedy and then what Ewan McGregor Gregor also said, that they're actually going to fight. And I don't think it's going to be a, a literal fight. They're not, Darth Vader's not going to come to Tatooine and all that no. sort of stuff. It's, I think it's going to be something in there in his mind or something yeah. in the Force. A mu- yeah, it's got to be a mindscape battle. And again, hey, we've set that up. Jedi can astral project themselves mm-hmm. and everything now. Yep. So we can do something like that. Uh, again, we've mentioned it before. An Obi-Wan show is going to be interesting because it's like, okay, what stories do they have left to tell? Because the comics and the novels and everything else have pretty much filled up his entire dance card for everything he's been doing. Yeah, that's the, thing, the one thing I'm really kind of worried about. I really hope that – I don't think they will, but I really hope they don't do what they did in the EU where they, there was like a series of books. I've talked about them before. There's a series of books mm. where he, he just like up and leaves – tatooine and goes on like adventures and fights boba fett and like grand inquisitors and all that and it was so fucking stupid but people loved it because lightsaber go brr of course yeah do you do you think they're gonna just like straight up adapt a bunch of the comic stuff we've seen already i know the last time i read the star wars comics there was that great story early on where he's living in his shack he's going slightly crazy from loneliness and then a bunch of jabba's gangsters start like you know shaking down the local moisture farmers and he's like well i can't let that happen so he goes and he has like a little fight with jabba and his crew and everything but he can't get noticed because you know no one can know he's living there and that he's a jedi yeah yeah i i have a feeling we'll do that because that, that that does sound like it would be like a good show and kind of fit within the aesthetic they've been building with the mandalorian it's very mm. western kind of unforgiving sort of thing um yeah, wouldn't wouldn't be very expensive it, it's all the clint eastwood movies yeah. it's unforgiven it's no country for old jedi it's grand speeder <laughs> yeah <laughs> grand speeder <laughs> See, that's what you didn't know, Obi-Wan. He's living out there, and he takes in a young sand person who's kind of an outcast from his people there. <laughs> and, you know, they become good buddies, and that sand person grows yeah, up. I was just going to say, you just crank. want Asher out ahead. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I don't fucking care. That's the hill I will die on. I want Dark Crate, damn it. Is that too much to ask? No, that, that would be stupid in this new thing for Obi-Wan to be like, damn it, it happened again. I raised another Sith. Fuck. <laughs> I think they're going to... I think it might have been also in this new canon but they, they i think they toyed with it as well in the um in the expanded universe but um where like um and it fits in with the films where obi-wan just he kept kind of like coming around to the to the last farm to like keep an eye on luke and mm. like owen and brew didn't like it because he's a fucking weirdo old creepy wizard old man. man so they like kind of get into fights with him about him not wanting to be um not wanting the boy to turn out like his father and everything Naturally. so it kind of pushes pushes obi-wan away see i like that a lot too because it means uncle owen and aunt Baru can be actual characters yeah. and you can get joel egerton back hey there you go he ain't doing much no oh well i think he's like producing a bunch of really great 
Australian TV here. Oh, well, there you go. Now you, you can drop by for a day. You get Edgerton <laughs> for a day. Film all the stuff you want. <laughs> what a what about Watto? Is Watto still around at this point on Tatooine? <laughs> Do we have to see Watto again? No, I don't think that'll fly in 2021. <laughs> You know what they do? You have a thing where it's like, yeah, I bought this shop from Watto, that racist caricature. Yeah, a big space piano fell on him. We'll never see him again. (laughs) It was a murder-suicide. It was him and Jar Jar. They were shooting up death sticks, and they both died. (laughs) (laughs) He'll never bother us ever again. (laughs) Man, frickin' uh, Tatooine as we know it is really filled up with people now, isn't it? It is, yeah. (laughs) A lot, of, a lot of people on there. So there's the Obi-Wan show. Cautiously optimistic on this one. I think this is definitely one of those deals where it's going to be all in the telling. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've got Deborah Chow working on it. So I'm I'm a bit more uh, optimistic since it's not someone like George Lucas writing and directing mm, it. Uh, so yeah. ho- hopefully they can bring something out more in Hayden than he did. Um, right. But I, I'm kind of holding my breath on that because Hayden even in general, isn't, like, a really good actor. Mm-mm. No, that's the bad thing about it, right? He's never that good in anything, no. really. But I but I wish him the best, though, that he wants to go back and, like, right this wrong of his past. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that he'll probably bring his all into this. I hope so. And thank you, uh, Pat Senior, as well. Here's, here's my question, too, with the Obi-Wan show. And this kind of extends to all the other stuff we're going to be talking about as well. Some of these are going to be series. Like Mandalorian was obviously going to be a series mm-hmm. with multiple seasons and everything. Obi Wan can't be a series. It has to be done after one season, yeah. right? Because yeah. eventually he has to go and die on the Death Star, or not the Death Star. He needs to go and die at Vader's hand and everything. Yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely is going to just be a mini series, and there's no way they could continue it after. They'd have to like go and do another character set at the same time or something, or someone who was in his show gets his show or something i don't know yeah yeah like like the dr afra effect mm-hmm. like okay who's the spin-off character from here yeah which which i'm fine with and i feel that this is like something they're gonna do not just for these star wars shows but for the marvel ones too where people assume oh these are gonna be big long running series no they don't have to be they might just be mini series they yeah. might just be ones and dones yeah i know i know people like to like rail on disney and all that where they oh they run all this stuff into the ground and everything but they know when to stop yeah or oh they're over milking their ip and everything which is extra funny because i'm like oh shut up you're gonna watch it yeah and it's like oh would you, would you rather they just not do anything with the ip you know you're the yeah, ones really. complaining they have no content and when they give you content you complain about yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, go go ask the Gargoyles fans how they feel about that Disney sitting on cool shit and not using it. <laughs> uh, moving on from there, we have the Cassian Andor show, which had been announced previously, but we actually got a nice little sizzle reel on this one now and kind of a better understanding of what the show is going to be. Yeah, it's filming at the moment, because um, in the sizzle reel we got to see some of the sets and everything. And mm. uh, Yeah, it's it's uh, been headlined by the uh, Tony Guroy, the guy behind like most of the Bourne films, he wrote most of them, and hey. it was, he was he brought on as a director in Rogue One as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he knows what he's doing, and yeah, I'm excited for that just because it means that the show's going to be very, like, spy thriller very uh i mean it, it would i be correct in my assumption at looking at this from a first glance it seems to be they want Andor to do for like a han solo and similar characters what mandalorian did for boba fett and that's like okay so they had their character they had their story and everything but let us give you something in the same vein with a new-ish character because obviously mm-hmm. literally Andor shot first in Rogue One. They make a big point of him doing that. Yeah, yeah, I I imagine yeah, they they're going to try and build a brand around the character and make mm-hmm. him yeah, like kind of like the new Boba Fett, I guess you could say, like that type of like character who kind of had nothing real really big impact or anything but looked mm. cool and kind of acted cool and whatnot and give and him a, a charismatic more, actor yeah give him a bit more uh, charisma and everything a bit more time to shine as a as i look into it more too they also seek to say because you know this is obviously during the time of the rebellion they say it'll also be a show about kind of the rise of the rebellion and everything I'm like well didn't we do that in star wars rebels wasn't that all about but then then again 
the crew of the ghost were a small cell who mm -hmm. ended up joining the greater rebellion so maybe this is about the birth and build up of the greater rebellion yeah well as as well cassian seems to be involved in the larger part of the the rebellion because i think even they announced in the cast um the woman who played mon mothma in rogue one and Yay. revenge of the sith is coming back cool i like her and stellan skarsgård's in the cast as well so i wonder who, what villain he's playing he's obviously he's he playing a villain he's playing the fucking yeah villain. he ain't he ain't playing a nice guy or anything <laughs> that's for sure but yeah i mean uh the, the the dude involved there i don't know why his name is escaping me for a second diego plays, luna diego luna who is just a charming motherfucker to begin with and he just seems super stoked about this in general yeah yeah, yeah. he uh, i imagine he's very happy his character go, gets an extra extra uh time behind the, the camera <laughs> yeah no, no other characters in rogue one did <laughs> Also, hey, you know, good good job for some Latino representation in the Star Wars yeah. universe. Yes, I know Pedro Pascal, but, like, dude wears a helmet the whole time and sounds like a white American the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a thing there. But, yeah, good good on him for that. And, I mean, hey, we could we could all use a little more uh, gunslinging in outer space. Yeah, and, uh, it, and, and course, if the, the concept art that was shown in that reel, if it's anything like that, if the show end, end product ends up anything like that, I think we're in for something real cool. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, we also got, and this is just a small one, Mandalorian Season 3 slated for Christmas next year. And I'm fine with that. Yeah, it makes sense. This this season came out around that time as well. We're, we're, we'll be coming up into the final episode this week. Yeah, yeah. We had a whole Bill Burr Mayfield-centric episode this week as they try and uh, get everything together to get the child back and i guess we'll see what their adventures will look like next at the end of all of this I, do you think uh, i was hoping bill burr would stick with them because after this week's episode he was he was so good they they definitely build an interesting character out of him and boy boy did they cast the right actor for it. it's like ah you fucking scumbag i hate you <laughs> Ugh, but you have some redeeming qualities i guess you're not as shitty as the other shitty people you hang out with and oh fuck <laughs> god he was perfect for that that just sums up bill burr in a nutshell <laughs> uh but uh yeah we're heading into the finale there we got stuff with the dark saber maybe bo katan will come back maybe we'll see more about mandalore the planet because they obviously made reference to it a bunch of times here yeah i i have a feeling that either like like the showdown because they 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 the whole episode that we just saw was about tracking where gideon and that was i have a feeling they're either going to be on mandalore or mm. um I think someone pointed out it was going to be like Nashada, like someone w used the map that was in the episode on like an actual uh, star Smart. map, and and but again, like those things, I don't think many people think about those things. So yeah, smart, smart. Uh, Space Lord brings up a good point in the chat too. Hey, do you think Andor will also be a one season wonder too? Because obviously, there's only so much you can do with him before well, he eventually has to die. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends when this show picks up. Like, is it going to lead into Rogue One, or is it like a two-season thing? I guess, I guess we'll find out. And also, Diego Luna's a pretty, like, you know, in-demand actor himself, so he probably can't commit to a big, long mm -hmm. series. Although, in saying that, uh, it's Star Wars, so... <laughs> true, true enough. Alrighty then, so after that, we got The Bad Batch. We got an actual trailer for this, the big much awaited sequel to clone wars with the characters that spun off from the episode the bad batch yeah and it looks great it just looks like it just looks like season nine of of clone wars pretty much it looks like everything i wanted from that show where it's like oh when's it taking place oh during the rise of the galactic empire so the bad batch are basically like the a team now who are hunted and doing jobs and everything and we get that great moment where they're like facing down a bunch of troopers and it's like oh no they're not clone troopers anymore they're you know friggin' storm troopers now what yeah that that'll look good uh fennec shand is in the show oh yeah that's pretty cool too yeah i imagine gonna be voiced by ming na wen um, which I think is pretty cool. Again, building up her character and probably why she's she's hunted by the Imperials and whatnot. To think we have so much like correlation now between the animated universes and the live action universes, it probably helps that David Filoni kept getting promoted up more and more. <laughs> yeah, he's the he's like the connective tissue between these shows. 
which is fine by me if he's going to be like the new George Lucas surrogate, if it's all going to be coming from his mind, I think it's in good hands. Yeah, well, he, he gets these characters, man. Indeed. Though though I would be lying if I said I wasn't still that one person holding out for like, so uh, Ryan Johnson trilogy? That was kicked around. Where's where's the Ryan Johnson That's probably trilogy? still coming. It's just too far away for them to announce anything about it. Like, I think they've kind of learned their lesson a little bit true and they haven't said it's canceled or anything no and and the way everything's going now where it's like okay well we said it was going to be a movie trilogy but maybe it'll be a three season tv show now (laughs) as well as that they never talked about um kevin feige's star wars film and i doubt that's canceled no No, that's true they also offhandedly mentioned taika watiti's going to be doing one too which is pretty dope because it's taika watiti yeah i'm excited i mean he said they said that it was going to be something completely different and hopefully the movie's like i don't know all in wookie or something yeah really what we do on kashik yeah it's all in gungan speak gunganese <laughs> <laughs> hunt for the gundark <laughs> It's just another weird, off like off the cuff, like awkward comedy just in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, that's that's all I want, and I want him to cast all his friends from Flight of the Concord <laughs> and everything else because, of course, he will. <laughs> I want to see that lady who is the bad guy in A uh, Hunt for the Wilder People yeah. and was like uh, in uh, the Thor movie. I want to yeah. see her there in a role. <laughs> Because it literally looks like he doesn't cast actors, he just casts normal people. Yeah, just normal people who just happen to also be his friends. <laughs> yeah, that certainly helps. The moral of the story is become good friends with Taika Watiti, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then after the Bad Batch, we have uh, the Acolyte. Yeah, this is um, uh, this is like kind of a recent addition to uh, to to the whole slate, and it looks like it's going to be exploring uh, the Sith in mm. in it wasn't the high republic it was like the the transition between high republic and then what just comes after it before the phantom menace and whatnot right did they describe this as like a as like a mystery almost yeah, like a thriller or something uh yeah like a murder mystery is what i gleamed from it but i could be wrong yeah but, this is definitely one of the more uh, mysterious ones yeah and the, this is going to be a series um right. so yeah i'm I'm looking forward to that. more and more star wars series a live action as well so yeah yeah also looks like they're kind of taking their chances with you know uh what is it the genre that it's in Here, here's the actual thing from it it's being developed by leslie headland That's for disney name. plus yeah who will be writing executive producing and serving as the showrunner it'll focus on the emergence of of the dark side powers in the final days of the high republic so i'm guessing rule of two stuff uh probably right. darth bane and darth plagueis maybe a hint, yeah, maybe a hint at palpatine because it's around because um if it's the final days of the old Repu- of the the high republic uh that's about 200 years before the phantom menace and i mean mm. you could probably work it so that palpatine is involved in it because i mean dark right. side shenanigans isn't it always the way yeah. baby palpatine give me yeah. my baby palpatine <laughs> back <laughs> see that's what they didn't say for this show is that baby yoda was so great that all of these shows will feature a new adorable yeah. baby character that needs to be protected <laughs> <laughs> you know what if that was the thing i'd be like you know what it's fine <laughs> <laughs> which baby's the cutest baby let's find out <laughs> Also, I do really enjoy the High Republic connection because obviously that's the next big thing they're doing with the comics. And that mm-hmm. comes out fairly soon, doesn't it? Yeah, the comics and books start coming out in like three weeks and start of January. And I want to be there. I want to actually be involved in the High Republic. This is the Star Wars thing I'm going to sink my teeth into, damn yeah, it. I got, I got the books pre-ordered and everything. Sweet, we'll have to talk about that uh then from that we have the lando show which man did you ever think lando would get as much love as he does he shows up in rebels he shows up in that movie he shows up in everything probably because billy d williams is just fucking game for anything yeah yeah he's getting on in years wants to leave his mark on star wars that's beyond the original trilogy true and now i mean in the expanded universe he's become a much more interesting and much more integral character than he ever was absolutely yeah 
Do you, have they announced casting for this? Obviously, Billy D is too old, and I think Donald Glover is too busy. So this is going to be our third. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Lando. Donald Glover, but I, I like I like the idea that it's going to be both of them. Where like, um, we already got kind of the hints. Like the perfect setup is the Calrissian Chronicles that was mentioned in, yeah. in Solo, and I love the idea of like of an, of an old Billy D telling telling randoms who would ever listen to him in the cantina all these stories That's that are like greatly dope. exaggerated from the Carizian chronicles and donald glover plays the younger <laughs> one i am actually all about that that sounds super dope and like we'll do that thing that they do from like that third call of juarez game where they're like that's not how it happened yeah yeah, they come yeah. back to billy d and he's like shut up son i'm telling the story and drinking my space cult 45 <laughs> <laughs> And then me and my buddy Lobot, oh yeah, Lobot's over here too. <laughs> because I mean, really, how can you have a Lando show without Lobot? Absolutely. And then, yeah, again, like the comics, you could dive into all of the stuff where Lobot like has PTSD and tried to kill himself and whatnot. <laughs> Did they ever explain how he met? I'm sure they have explained how he met Lobot because yeah. that's definitely something for the show. Yeah, yeah. In the in the in the Lando series and um the Lando comic from uh, Charles Soule uh they yeah. they sort of dive into that a little bit that's definitely some shit to adapt lando could be really fun and i see it as kind of like a more guardians of the galaxy fun having wheeling and dealing series because that's who lando is yeah yeah i'll shoot you but i'll also charm you and gamble with you and you know sometimes i just i jack sparrow my way through life <laughs> basically are they that bad or am i that good you don't know <laughs> And then also that that leaves uh, the questions like, can we get like Olden Aaron Reich back as Han? Mm, yeah, that would be really funny because like again, Solo didn't track great with audiences, but there was definitely stuff people agreed that they loved, and everybody loved Lando from that movie. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So so to see the young guy come back as Solo, even just for a cameo, even just for one episode, would be pretty fucking cool. It would be, yeah. Where it's like, hey, we didn't forget about you. Hey, speaking of guys who didn't get a show, and it's funny they didn't give the solo guy a show but went right to Lando, why didn't they give John Boyega a show? Because it seems like all these things exist in different timelines, and I know John Boyega was pretty vocal about feeling that his character was underutilized and didn't get what he was promised. Because he says he doesn't like Disney+. Plus. That he literally oh. says that. He says that he wants to do more of of uh, Finn, but doesn't want it to be a Disney Plus show. He, mm. he, he has he's that mindset, whereas if it's not in the movies, it's it's garbage. Oh, oh that's a shame, because I think there's a real great setup for a Finn show, because it's like, hey, he joined up with all those other uh, former Stormtrooper child soldiers. They form a badass crew of freedom fighters and travel around the universe freeing other child slaves, basically. I just, I don't understand his his view there, because, like, obviously, because he said this, like, at a time where the Mandalorian exists and everything, and, like, surely yeah. he would have seen that and been like, oh, they can actually do, like, Star Wars on TV now. Mm true you know what i think it is i think because he came up through the theater i think that's a very yeah. theater actor thing yeah it, it as feels opposed, like he's going backwards like it is you know it's, it's the artistry of it and yeah to go to tv would to be a step back from going from the theater to going the screen and you know hey maybe he'll change his tune in a bit maybe someone will write just like such an amazing script you'll have to do it yeah or dump a bunch of money or something at his door or dump a bunch of money at his door too ah he's a pretty highly in demand actor i think he's gonna bounce back to the next thing but you know what? i'm a fan too and i kind of agree with them and i'm like yeah i think that there's a real easy setup for the further adventures of finn i mean shit that goddamn lego movie for crying out loud actually did some fucking interesting shit with finn's character it did yeah uh yeah i think it'd be really cool if he did get the show and th as long as he doesn't get as lot of creative input because mm. the last film he got creative input bombed and that was pacific rim uppising oh did he actually have creative control Appar apparently he's the shit. reason why like um they had those fucking helmets that weren't really helmets that show your face mm. and the robots, how they didn't act like the ones in the original mm. where they were big and slow. They're all fast moving and everything now. And yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. Well, you know, we don't all hit it out of the park a hundred times. <laughs> I'm sure if you gave me creative control, I'd put some dumb shit in there too. <laughs> if you let me, so everyone's Canadian. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Really? Did, did Joel just cast everyone in his hometown? <laughs> no, <laughs> Uh, so from Lando, we have Star Wars Vision, 
which is going to be an anime anthology, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, each episode is done by a different, uh, I believe, a different Japanese animation house or Japanese animators mm. uh, telling their take on Star Wars and the Star Wars universe. I feel like this is also a real big badge of honor for any long-running IP. It feels like everyone gets the anime mm-hmm. anthology at some point. And obviously, even if you're just a fan, you've seen a ton of anime Star Wars crossover. I mean, the fucking My Hero Academia guy has a massive boner for fucking Star Wars. Yeah, and th- there's like great like fan products of like I'm sure you've seen the mm. fan one of, of uh, I think it was like a Tie Fighter and X Wing Dogfight yeah. and yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see what what this is going to be like. I mean, even just culturally and artistically speaking, it's so much shit coming full circle because it's like, you know, uh, Lucas gets inspired by like Kurosawa samurai movies and Wild West movies. And, you know, he puts that into a science fiction setting and then Japanese culture gets inspired by Star Wars. And now it like comes back around, you know, East meets West. Yeah, it's a big Ouroboros very much uh, lich lord chris brings up the animatrix yes i was thinking about the animatrix too and i think fucking halo had an anime one too i do believe Mm -hmm. of all things so yeah that's definitely going to be an interesting one i like i like that a lot of these are outside the box and hopefully it'll shut people up i mean it won't when they're like oh these are all just the same types of shows over and over again no they're not and even if they were they'd still watch them exactly that's the thing and even if they weren't they're still gonna be huge because they're star wars uh then we got a droid story someone's finally got that killer droid pitch we've been waiting yeah for. well this actually sounds like a live action version of the droid cartoon from like the 80s yeah. and if, yes, if, if, it, if it is i'm is. i'm totally on board with that yeah it's like a tales from the crypt but like with uh r2 and c3po where it's like yeah they just drift through the universe in between movies getting picked up by new owners and the big thing here is they're like oh we're announcing a new droid a new droid you've never seen before will be in this will be like the third man in this three stooges team i'm cool with that (laughs) yeah will he be cute will he be awesome will i be able to buy him yeah will i be able to (laughs) Will I be able to buy him at the Disney park? Uh, you better bet your fucking ass you will. <laughs> we have been working with cute scientists to make sure that you'll absolutely love He's this new droid and talk BB-8 about it. BB-8 and Baby Yoda. <laughs> oh, amazing. He's made of fluff. He's just a big cloud, but also a droid. Oh, Batman Gotham Knight, Jaden says, yep, that's right. That was another popular American brand goes anime. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. See, look, we could do this all day. Yeah. Uh, Now, what do we got after that? We got Rangers of the New Republic, which was kind of referenced already by the dad from Kim's Kim's Convenience when he tried to, uh, what is it, uh, recruit Gina Carano for some sort of thing. Yeah. um, So originally, I thought this show was going to be about the X-Wing pilots Mm. and stuff, but the the Rogue Squadron announcement, the ray of that. So I think it's going to be about, like, Gina Carano and and like Cobb Vanth and people like that who are who are marshals of the right. New Republic. Maybe, maybe not Gina Carano. Yeah, we'll yeah, see well, what yeah. happens in between. Yeah. Unless they already signed her to a contract, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm I'm totally open to a show that's basically the Shield or like Justified in space. Yeah, it sounds like a police procedural in space in the Star Wars universe. They show up. They got to solve a space crime. And they got to work it out from there. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty dope. That's a good setup for television. Yeah, not only that, it'll be completely different from other like crime shows. Cause like you're set in like, you're, you're in fucking Star Wars. Like, how is that? How is like crime and like, how like, like CSI's work? How is that different in the Star Wars universe? What tools do they use? It's very mm. intriguing. A bunch of splicers stole a bunch of credits the other day. We gotta track them down by going to the cantina. Yeah, we gotta we gotta, we gotta find those death stick dealers. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a swoop uh, bike ring going on there. We gotta go in undercover, <laughs> and it's just Fast and the Furious in space. Yeah, they are stealing uh, I don't know hollow discs or something out of the back of trucks. <laughs> again you know someone in hollywood has that where it's like look it's about swoop bike racers it's literally just fast and the furious in space we got vin diesel attached can i make this movie (laughs) oh vin diesel's pretty busy he's busy in that in that arc 2 game 
Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that all of this was also happening as the Game Awards with a bunch of trailers. And honestly, I think all this Star Wars and Marvel stuff uh, for once actually uh, drowned out all the new video game stuff. Well, that's why I didn't put it on the list. And there wasn't any fucking big announcements at the Game Awards either. No, we're maybe getting a new Mass Effect and a new Dragon Age, but don't get too excited because literally all the people from the original Bioware are gone. Yeah, now. yeah, and this is yeah current year Bioware who aren't very good. <laughs> yeah, who have dropped the ball, and again, literally everyone you liked from Bioware is gone now, and the rest of stuff wasn't really a lot of footage, just cool trailers. Evil West looks fun, but who can tell from just a trailer? Yeah, Fortnite and Kratos and Master Chief and all that sephiroth is in smash and again as a guy who just got a brand new nintendo console i still don't feel brave enough to try out smash because i know people have been playing it literally since they were infants and that they would probably kick my (laughs) dick in from a mile away (laughs) you fucking smash scrub don't know what you're doing no i don't i really don't Uh, and then from there, we have the Ahsoka show, which we all knew had to be coming anyway, because that whole Ahsoka episode was one giant backdoor pilot. Yeah, and according to uh, the Kathleen Kennedy in the reveal, this Rangers of the Republic and Mandalorian will be converging into something. Ooh, a big crossover episode? Either a crossover episode or a movie. Mmm, man, that's the real test for streaming. Look, you loved these shows on your app you loved watching them at home in your underwear well what if we gave you a reason to go out to the movie theater would you watch it yeah now i don't know whether it will be a movie because it could always lead into whatever that rebel sequel is meant to be true because i have i have to imagine that the ahsoka show is going to tie into because she's looking for grand admiral thrawn right which means he's still around and didn't get sent to the unknown parts of space with ezra assumedly yeah and what or or he did and she's still Mm. and she's looking for ezra as well and uh, like her logo is is like very much uh reminiscent of the world between worlds and again ezra's Ezra's tied to that sure is which again a lot of dumb fucks online being like, oh, the Ahsoka show is going to delete those three movies I didn't like because of time travel. Oh, shut the fuck up. No, they're not. No, they're not. Not at all. <laughs> yes, it's an interesting concept that Star Wars does have time travel in its back pocket if they should want it. But look, again, go watch that Lego movie and tell me how you think they approach time travel. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I'm looking at the logo right here and it is totally that like space between spaces. Yeah. Hey, maybe we're going to see more stuff, uh, what is it, with the brother, the sister, and that mm-hmm. whole kind of, like, early Force mythology that uh, Filoni really seems to be going all in on in its connection to Ahsoka. Yeah, and more owls and loth cats. Y- yeah, more owls. Will we see the owl? I am so all in on the fucking owl. Every time <laughs> the owl shows up, there it is. There it is, everyone. <laughs> I, I will never forget I watched that final Clone Wars with a person who only had like a passing interest in Star Wars and they saw me like completely lose my shit at an owl flying overhead and they thought I was like mentally ill. I'm like, no, the owl means so many things. <laughs> you don't know, man, you weren't there. So then I, of course, had to sit them down and explain the owl to them and they're like, yeah, I didn't need that in my life. I'm like, well, you asked. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, Ahsoka, no brainer. <laughs> for a serious look it's the jedi that you not only really like now but that you grew up with so like for a whole generation this is going to be their fucking jam yeah yeah i i'm so excited for this show and if it again if it ties into the mandalorian and rangers like what huge thing do they have coming that they have that needs all of these three series tied in with one another yuzon vong oh yes yes please <laughs> yes they got they got they need well, they they, that's the thing they need they need to put out a um a big a big new threat now i guess true. that the uh like the first order and final order and all that are done what's the next thing because that's the thing with star wars there's always another thing there's always got to be a new thing well i know they have like those new evil space vikings mm-hmm for high republic what if this is all like a big circular thing to be like no no no. we need to introduce the evil space vikings in high republic so it's a big deal when they come back in the future that'd be pretty yeah they come out from the unknown regions yeah like we're playing a big and, crazy long and game i mean here. uh, uh Filoni's involved in this and he almost had the use in vong in in clone wars 
So he clearly wants it. It's clearly in the back of his head. Yeah. What are some other big evil forces there? I know Black Sun existed, but they weren't quite like how they were in the EU. Yeah, they have, uh, oh, what was the threat that happened after in the expanded universe? Just, I've got to look this up now because it's on the, it's on the tip of my tongue and I don't want to get the word wrong. Just, I think it was, it was the, okay, of course it doesn't tell you. Oh, what was it? It was... It's a big thing. It happened like literally the day after Reven- uh, Return of the Jedi ends. The um, the, the chat sh- keeps saying the, Shir- the Shirook, the Shirook. I think they were called. Oh yeah, what's their deal? Ah, uh, they were like 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 an evil government sort of thing. Weird uh, alien birds that had like people as slaves that talked in their stead and sort of thing. Oh, so they're like uh, those freaking things from the Dark Crystal. Yeah, yeah, kinda, yeah. Huh, which actually makes a lot of sense, because so much of Star Wars is made up of Muppets. Of course, we just bring in the evilest Muppets of all. <laughs> ah, the chat already says Dark Crystal. There you go. They're all just putting it together. <laughs> so, so Lich Lord Cl- Chris said more Palpatine clones. No, no more Palpatine <laughs> clones. We're officially over clones. I, I'd actually like that if that became a thing in like the Mandalorian. It's like, oh, the fucking Palpatine, he has to like kill them. And they're, yeah, they're just like a all. nothing to him. <laughs> it's like fucking that Palpatine would... clones, man. Because, yeah, as we've seen, Mando's not like the sharpest knife in the drawer when it comes to like universal events and everything. He just starts shooting all the clones. Like, who are those guys? Yeah, I don't know. What's the significance of this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you do you not know what space Hitler looks like? Nah, nah, I just kind of keep my head yeah. to the ground. Mostly. I'm like a nobody in, in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Which I do love that about the show. Mm-hmm. As someone said, Night Sister show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some. I know most of them were destroyed, and Ventress is kind of like you know, uh, she's kind of in a gray space continuity wise. Yeah, yeah. Could like she builds a new Night Sister order, mm-hmm. and we see what happens with that. Maybe follow like a new ride along Night Sister for some reason. The 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 one uh, Sister Meryl from uh, Fallen Order. Ah, that's right. I forgot about that. Oh, so there you go. So it's already baked yeah. into the universe. Still need Cal to come back in some form. He's still alive, at least. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Okay. Well, by so the I end of the he, game, he survives the end of his game. So yeah. That's right. Who's that other Clone Wars guy with the dreads that everybody really loves? Did he Queen make it? Or did Voss. he die? It's uh, nebulous whether he he lives or dies. Okay, because there's another like kick-ass dude and some nice little you know African American representation in the Star Wars universe if they ever want to bring them back. Yeah, that I'd be cool with. Uh, all right, so after the Ahsoka show, we got the Rogue Squadron uh, show directed by Patty Jenkins. Yeah, this was a big surprise, and this is actually the next Star Wars film to be coming out. It's shocking that it took them this long to just be like, yo, Rogue Squadron, because that's like always there on like the back of the head. Yeah, I'm so excited for this. I'm I'm, I'm excited as well that it's not just going to be a rehash of the video games and the books. It's mm. gonna, as Patty said, it's going to be something new. And it's she said it was going to be set in the future. So I, I don't know okay. what, what that actually means, whether future from like when the Rogue Squadron was actually a thing, which is the Empire mm. time. So like is this going to be set sequel times or beyond that. Yeah, because that's what I think is very interesting about all these new Star Wars things, too, and kind of like the faith that Disney has in their audience to put this shit together for themselves and not need their hands held, where it's like, look, this takes place in three completely different time periods, the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, and after in the new sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which, yeah, I would be cool with that if Rogue Squadron was the newer one, you know, like they have to come together for some reason for something. Yeah, she said it's going to be an original story, but we'll take reference from the books and games. So, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to it. I'd, I'd very much like Poe Dameron to come back, maybe be the yeah. leader of Rogue Squadron. I would like that a lot. And also, too, it's like such a no-brainer in terms of theming where it's like, yeah, it's uh, Top Gun, but in space. Yeah, and it, it also surprised me. Like, I never knew that, that. Did you see the announcement trailer Patty Jenkins put out? No, I didn't actually. She, it was an announcement trailer. Yeah, she dropped it at the same time as the announcement. And um, apparently her father was a test fighter pilot and died like in combat. Huh. And she'd been looking wow. for a story forever. And this is the story that, that sort of spoke to her. And I found that very strange considering she works for DC that she never did a Green Lantern film. 
Yeah, wow, that sounds deeply personal for a creator to draw upon. Holy shit, wow. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, that just went up a couple notches in my must-watch category. Yeah, so th- I guess they must have offered her something that, yeah, spoke to her. Very much so. <laughs> Dougley in the chat says, but what about Porkins, Wedge, and Dak? <laughs> Indeed, what about... Maybe we'll get flashbacks to the formation of the original Rogue Squad. Maybe. And look, if you need if you need someone to play young Porkins, I'm just saying, clearly the <laughs> Disney company loves casting quirky Canadians. <laughs> so let me just tell you, I'm the quirkiest Canadian ever, and I've been working on my wedge. <laughs> <laughs> there, that was my audition. Send that to him. <laughs> I can blow I can blow up real good. Can blow up real real good. Uh all right then. So oh who the fuck's blowing up my phone right now? Can't you tell we're talking about Star Wars? Uh from there we have Oh yeah, I guess that's it for the Star Wars thing. That's all the Star Wars things that are coming out. Holy shit. Yeah, and there's probably still more we don't even know about. Oh, without a doubt. Again, like you said, they're probably going to announce another video game soon. They're probably going to announce all sorts of things. Yeah, I'm surprised video games weren't included in the Disney sort yeah. of thing. I guess maybe because they technically aren't made by Disney. True enough. They outsource that to other people, which is weird that of all the businesses they're in and exact so much control and they've never tried to like, you know, really get a foot in the gaming world. I guess they're like, we make enough money as it is and the gaming world is stressful. Yeah true enough uh so i guess from there we can uh flip on over to the marvel side of things where they announced damn near just as much (laughs) everything 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 hey did you want a thing guess what you got the thing (laughs) like literally shit people have been asking about forever you get the thing (laughs) and uh, i guess starting things off we got yet another wandavision trailer and we will be watching wandavision before we know it yeah a couple of weeks hard to believe in that trailer looking pretty good i know i've said it before but i'll say it again they are really experimenting with the format here in wandavision this looks like a big mind bendy outside the box concept of a show that they probably couldn't have done in the movies and only really done on tv this is definitely something that lends itself to a long form tv show and we're getting eight episodes of it it and lo- it looks amazing it looks so good i love how we get like the four by three aspect ratio for the and it mm. sort of expands out as the as the years go along i love also the fact apparently they shot the 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 comedy segments of the show in front of a live audience so you get oh really so you get like the the claps and everything that are actually in there oh, it's not like a fun. laugh track that's pretty good that's pretty fun also, too, you know, we got uh, we got to see some returning characters in here. We get to see uh, what is it, Scott Lang's uh, agent buddy, yep, Jimmy uh, Woo, Jimmy Woo back again. One of our favorite uh, comedic actors there, reprising his role. Good for him. Uh, we get to see Spectrum here, Adult Spectrum, who's showing up here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, who who's part of Wonder's dream, but maybe doesn't know why. Because the feeling I seem to get is that her powers are so crazy now she's sucking people into her dream world and making them part of her fantasy, even if they don't know it. Well, the thing I got from the trailer is that maybe someone is actually doing this to her. And like she's not or she's not aware of what she's doing. And I, again, we've got goddamn Agatha Harkness in this. In True this. So I imagine she's involved somewhere in this and Mephisto's rumored to be involved in it. Mm. Yes, in fact, we get maybe another little reference to Mephisto in another trailer. Mm, Yes, we do. That we saw. But yeah, uh, WandaVision looks super cool. And I love that even though we've gotten so many trailers right now, we still don't fucking know much about it. So I think there's a lot to actually be surprised about. Because like as much as I like the other Marvel movies, we can safely assume what's going to happen from a bunch of them just by watching the trailer. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, this one, we we don't really even have like a, basic premise we just know that oh no something fucky's going on (laughs) something fucky is very going on probably born out of wanda's grief over losing vision but vision's back but maybe he's not we don't know yeah the 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 soul stones involved in it somehow yeah yeah so uh I, i guess we'll know soon i guess we'll know in january yeah yeah very soon a month away very soon cannot wait and uh, on the similar front of just wildly creative and super unexpected, we got the Loki trailer for a show that, like, I a- almost forgot was happening. And, you know, boy, boy, did they remind me in a big explosive way. Oh, boy, yeah, it, it looks so damn cool. Lo- Loki is D.B. Cooper. 
didn't see that coming, <laughs> but all right, that's pretty fucking dope. So this looks to be a universe hopping, time traveling, almost like weird control David Lynchian take on Loki, but also the Loki from the end of Endgame where he escaped. Yeah, so it's not the Loki that we saw who died at in Infinity War. It's the one from Endgame, which means he doesn't have that that extra character development that the one he got after this because he's basically just the 2012 version he's still an asshole still a villain yeah uh, so and from the trailer it looks like he or he gets kidnapped by the tva uh who are like the time time bureau mm. sort of thing um because he's clearly abusing time yeah oh, clearly um with the with the tesseract so i i really think he's going to be forced to somehow work with them because there's there's like uh, scenes in the trailer where he's in like like a suit that has the tva yeah. on it and everything so it looks like maybe this is like one of those things like will you help put time back the way it was and you'll be free or something so, so it's quantum leap agent of asgard and also vote loki too because yeah. he's literally wearing the same costume <laughs> and the same pin and man that's such a cool fucking cover and i love that they recreated that yeah. well, the, the, and the thing to note about that is that that loki isn't the loki we see in the rest of the trailer that's like a div- oh. that's like an alternate universe loki interesting because he goes so he like- goes to like all these different universes there's like one where like new york's all fucked up you see the avengers tower and everything and yeah all, all these different earths and everything so it looks like it's gonna be real fun and he's db cooper on one of these earths <laughs> wow was not expect. someone said it's got a real rick and morty vibe to it yeah yeah loki is rick going around to different Ho- timelines and universes yeah. and fucking it all up hopefully it won't be as ruined as rick and morty is <laughs> a pickle loki everybody i can be a it's pickle loki but he's like a piccolo and not like a pickle get it <laughs> oh that's that's too 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 deep joel there's a touch too deep did you see it where the god of mischief turned himself into a pickle funniest shit i've ever seen in my life <laughs> yeah this this also looks like just a big concept show like they didn't need to go this big for loki they could easily have just said like ah it's loki he's fighting a villain da, 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 da. but it looks like they're actually trying to do something big here yeah I, and i imagine it's, it's definitely going to have like lasting effects on i don't know whatever comes of him after this i i have to imagine he's going to be in thor 4 in some oh way. yeah this at the end of this, they'll find a way for him to get back to life and back in the main universe. And oh, uh, Generation West is reminding us that the TVA were actually a Walt Simonson creation mm-hmm. for his run. Oh, right on. Yeah. I did not know that. That's cool. Uh, also, too, some other uh, mild Marvel Easter eggs there. We get three big heads there in the TVA office that look very similar to the Living Tribunal. Yeah, well, I think they're... um. Oh, someone pointed them out. I'm not too familiar with them, but someone did point them out that because people were getting them confused with the Living Tribunal and like the Council of Kangs because they look mm. very Kangish. They do, which is very interesting in and of itself because we know Kang is going to be playing a big part there and batting a lot of cleanup for the time travel shit yeah. that uh, was done in Endgame. Yeah, people people have said, had found the art that 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 those faces are based off, and they're exactly the same. They're the Timekeepers, Xanth, Ast, mm. and Vorth right okay that makes a little bit more sense considering that it's the tva offices Mm -hmm. that they would either be an arm of kang or work for kang or worship him or something like that yeah oh yes i've read the walt simonson run jersey like it's just been a long time that was released a long time ago that was a long time ago and also the tva haven't been back in anything in forever yeah that's the thing that's why it threw me another interesting thing someone on twitter pointed out it's owen wilson who looks goddamn unrecognizable yeah this. yeah looks unrecognizable he's kind of standing there in this weird church and we see a pane glass window above there of what looks to be jesus but it's very clearly a red devil man with horns and everything and it's like oh do you think that's mephisto is freaking is owen wilson mephisto i was thinking that as well and i was like that's totally like marvel to do that where they cast this guy you think he's just going to be a com- comedy uh, you know comedic uh, relief and whatnot and he's, he turns out to be your fucking mephisto <laughs> Hey, it's me, Mephisto, Lord of Lies. You want to sell your marriage to me there, Spider-Man? Come on, it'll be fun. Do it. 
Well, I mean, you just sound so sweet there. I guess I'll just have to. Yeah, that's right. Do it. <laughs> Again, you'd never, you'd never, you'd want to make a deal with him because it's, it's Owen Wilson. He's so charming. Do you think Owen Wilson and Luke Wilson argue about who's in the better superhero thing? <laughs> that's gonna, oh, it's going to be an awkward Chris, Christmas this year. <laughs> For real. Oh, you got to be uh, the best stepdad on television? That's cool. I'm the devil. How about that? <laughs> how about, uh, oh yeah, how about we take this outside and we wrestle? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Owen Wilson, you're the devil. Yeah, it's always the last one you suspect, right? <laughs> Let that ill-gotten donut be forever on your head, Loki. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, L- Loki looks like a lot of fun, and again, very, very different yeah really weird which is good which it should be for a loki show it should be weird absolutely uh now the next sizzle reel we got here was something naturally i'm super excited for and that was the miss marvel sizzle reel they actually seem to be further along than even i assumed yeah we actually got to see a couple of scenes uh very briefly though uh play out and yeah it looks great looks entirely comic accurate which makes sense because those g willow wilson stories are so perfectly adaptable (laughs) yeah they really really are and just wow cannot believe that this is coming along and they really hit home the importance of it where it's like look this character took off like a shot became a big cultural force overnight so of course we want to you know do the show right yeah it it looks really really damn good and i like i love that they were they were quick to sell her as like you know that she's going to be miss marvel and everything and she takes takes after captain marvel so she's obviously going to be in captain marvel too and be really yeah. ingrained in in like they're not separating these at all they're, they're going to yeah, have yeah. these people coming to these movies which really states a hell of a precedent and i'm glad they finally done that where it's like look just because you start on television just Mm -hmm. because you start on one of these app shows doesn't mean you either won't get a movie and doesn't mean movie characters won't show up in your thing as well yeah again again it brings me back to that that john boyega talk we had where it's like you know they do this for star wars as well yeah yeah, it's a, it's a heck of a thing. I mean, I guess you kind of got to wait and see because I'm sure these people still have bad taste in their mouth from like, oh, so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. never really got to come back in the movies. They got minor movie people on their show, but never a full thing. And then with the Netflix shows, it's like, oh, it feels like you guys stopped trying after a season. <laughs> well, I, again, I think it was just more office politics. Like, I imagine oh, they, they wanted to, but, you know, Ike Perlmutter and Jeff Loeb mm. and all of those fucking people who are, who are gone that. now yeah who are all gone now so it, it, stuff like this can happen yeah we're not saying they were literally the problem but it shows that they were quite literally the problem <laughs> <laughs> so there you go uh yeah miss marvel looks super fucking dope super on board for it uh so excited to see other people know about the character and obviously with the new show we're going to be getting a new comic soon because the current solid in a mid-run ends at 18 yeah yeah oh yeah we'll definitely be getting a new new number one to go coincide with the show that's how it's gonna work even if they wait a bit even if they're like you know we're gonna have the character in champions but solo miss marvel is gonna cool off for a bit and then we're gonna make a big deal about the return of her solo book Mm -hmm. man it would be fucking dope if they got g willow wilson back in fact i really think they should yeah they might actually i mean if it if they're gonna tie it into the show and the show is based on her her run why not have a run that people can pick up and yeah and read by the right writer you know yeah i think that, like even if it was just for a couple arcs and then she hands it off to someone else mm-hmm. because it's like hey you wrote the stories everyone loves the show is going to be based on those stories and also no one was buying up your wonder woman unfortunately mm-hmm. Which, man, I think both companies kind of gave up on her way too fucking early, where it's like, but she created this new amazing thing that they're turning into shit, and no one has any work for her, seriously? <laughs> so fucking weird. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, so there's your Miss Marvel sizzle reel. Black Panther, it's official. We all assumed it, but they're not going to be recasting T'Challa, yeah, obviously. pretty obvious, yeah. But I guess they had to come out and say it and finally quash all rumors Nor did they say that, oh, you know, sure he will be moving into the role. Maybe that was the plan, but maybe it ain't the plan no more after the actress went full anti-vaxxer on Twitter. (laughs) 
And not just anti-vaxxer, but, uh, what is it, transphobic anti-vaxxer, too, because I watched that video. I'm like, oh, is it as bad? Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh, it just got worse. <laughs> Did you see the bit there where Don Cheadle was actually kind of shitting on her, too? And it's like, li uh, later, uh, Lieta, but then he had to walk it back and delete that tweet. <laughs> Because it seems like Don Cheadle is like the ultimate arbiter of like, don't think they can't fire you at this thing. I'm in the universe because they fired Terrence Howard because he was a fuck up. <laughs> don't don't think you can stay forever. In fact, they fired people for small things like Edward Norton, who just wanted, uh, what is it, more control and a better cut. <laughs> yeah. So that's a fuck of a thing. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we come back and say, oh, Shuri disappeared in the snap as well. <laughs> oh, the, the, but, she, but she was in the Endgame. Uh, no, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. <laughs> Scroll like do, like like door guy and Mandalorian. They'll CG her out in the in the Disney it, Plus cuts. Exactly. Oh, you see, Shuri was experimenting with the uh, negative zone, and she fell through it, <laughs> never to return. And, Never to return. And Cara Dune was there too, actually. Yeah, this is this is where we cross over Marvel and Star Wars. And uh, <laughs> what is it? And Chris Pratt's going to fall into that pit too if he doesn't straighten up and fly right. <laughs> it's, all, it's all we're going to say. We're just saying in the next Guardians movie, Thor might leave him on a planet and fly off with the Guardians. And then it really will be as Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Don't don't think we won't, everybody, because we will. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Black Panther 2. M maybe it can be the rise of Umbaku. Everyone really likes Winston Duke. I don't think anyone would complain if he went from uh, Man Gorilla to Black Panther. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine with it too. Dude seems super charismatic, jacked as fuck. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I, I always like the idea, or this, this was until... Uh, the teacher right went full fucking rant on twitter i like the idea that like the 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 king and panther role didn't need necessarily need to be the same thing you could have had like her ruling as like a queen monarch mm. and and baku as the black panther protector of wakanda yeah true enough the chat saying what did chris pratt do chris pratt has been a part of an anti-gay church for like years he's very quiet about it on social media and also like when they took uh what is it like a like a bunch of pictures recently he wasn't in it and a lot of people saw that as like him sending a message that he didn't agree with the rest of his cast but then again freaking uh what is it robert downey jr and everyone else stuck up from was like stop being mean to chris pratt on twitter everyone he's my friend and i'm like that doesn't make it better robert that just makes it sound like you're literally being the school mom like everyone's being mean to chris right now he's an adult i think he can handle it <laughs> In fact, uh, hey, what is it? Elliot Page gave him shit about that years before. Yeah. That was when I first heard about it. And I'm just like, whoa, which is hilarious because she or he now played, uh, what is it? Uh, Kitty Pride in the X-Men <laughs> movies and Star-Lord and them were in were in a relationship in the comics. So I thought that was really funny. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, someone had a good idea too where it's like just age her up and replace her with a different actress yeah you could probably get away with that yeah easily easily you say oh quantum aftershocks i don't know <laughs> hey there you go good old quantum aftershocks it's funny too because uh, it's like the disney marvel movies do replace actors and characters a lot of the time it's just usually their background characters that you never notice yeah yeah it's yeah um well they they did that in and we'll talk about it in ant-man as well yeah for sure most definitely uh again te no tevia that's not the exact same thing at all get no. that idea right out of your fucking head tevia no, not at all <laughs> don't don't make us sit you down and give you a talking to tevia because we will we'll, we'll we'll pull this whole show over and give you a talking to <laughs> we'll we'll turn this show around and go home <laughs> uh also, too, again, we mentioned this on an episode, Tevi, and I know we listened. The whole reason James Gunn got in trouble is because a bunch of fucking internet Nazis who were pissed about things he said about the president actively went out of their way to try and get him fired. And they did until better sense, uh, what is it, uh, prevailed. I, 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 um, I posted after this because he, he's also getting more Guardian stuff as well. It's like ever, after being canceled, his his uh, career has never been better. He's gotten Suicide Squad, Peace, The Peacemaker Show. 
a Guardian yeah. show, a Guardian's Christmas special, probably more shit after this. <laughs> And again, too, you know, when we say canceling, we say that with like finger quotes. It was a bunch of people with a fucking axe to grind with mm-hmm. them that tried to get him in trouble only to realize, oh, no, wait, those people are the problem. They fucking suck because they actually have a bunch of swastikas on their profiles and Peppy <laughs> the Frogs and shit. I guess we don't have to listen to those people. No. And and they don't get to win. Uh, all right, what else do we got here? Oh, we already mentioned Captain Marvel 2 is going to feature Monica Rambo and Kamala Khan. Uh, oh, She-Hulk show. Some big news that came out of this. Abomination and Mark Ruffalo are going to be in it. Yeah, I, I'm glad to see uh, Abomination come back. Yeah, absolutely. That feels like one of those things they've just been sitting on forever. It's like, when's, when's Tim Roth going to get to come yeah. back? When's Tim Roth going to get to We got hints of him in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. breaking out of the raft when um, Captain mm-hmm. America freed everyone. Um, That's right. So uh, I imagine, yeah, it's going to maybe do something with that. He's going to come in and fight, try and fight a new Hulk, I guess. What, uh, what really gets me, too, is that... Uh, what is it? Is that they finally... Uh, announced quote unquote the actress that's gonna play she hulk but it's the one that we knew it was from before but she denied it until right now i don't know why she denied it when it was yeah it it was like officially announced like ages ago that was weird that was weird that i that had to be some sort of contract hold that where she's like no i want a little bit more money yeah maybe I need a little bit more money. I need a little bit more on this back uh on the back end there. Don't don't fully admit that I'm doing it yet. Mm-hmm. But then it's like we saw no more news come out from it and then eventually it just got announced here. Yeah, she's going to be She-Hulk. Yeah. Which yeah, all right, works for me. Now obviously uh Mark Ruffalo in there makes a ton of sense because you know Jen Walters has got to get that life-saving gamma blood from somewhere even if it's just in the first episode. Oh, it definitely will be in the first episode. Which is fine by me. Uh, having her fight the abomination makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like maybe a final boss or a mid boss, so she can kind of be like, "Oh, you know, I'm as strong or comparable to my cousin because I defeated, you know, the first big villain that gave him a hard time." What about the leader? Do they set up the leader for season two? Because there's another thing they're just sitting on and never did anything with. Yeah, I'm, I have to imagine they they bring back tim blake nelson as the leader or maybe even recast him now that he's gonna have a big fucked up cancer head you could get away with it because that's perfect for television where it's like oh you think you're so strong you think you're so great well i'm the leader i have all these mental powers and hey i can fuck up your life as a lawyer and as a superhero with my mental powers <laughs> Like, that's good television. That's like a purple man, like, season-long villain you can do with the leader. Yeah, absolutely. And you could make him really scary and really cool and not just, you know, do Hector Hammond again. (laughs) Yeah, make it look exactly like Hector Hammond. And even get a weirdo like like that whatever Skarsgård brother that was. Stellan. Yeah. Um, Stellan Skarsgård. um, um, And, yeah, um, apparently... uh, feige also mentioned that uh because it's she's a lawyer and everything you never know who might show up as well Mm. that that could be a hint at maybe maybe matt murdoch shows up or or foggy nelson yes because another big piece of news this week is apparently everyone who's ever been in a spider-man movie is going to be back for spider-man 3 because of multiversal shenanigans not even anyone in spider-man just like everyone in general everyone in the world has been cast this is this is a, instead of a stimulus check, you get cast in in <laughs> Spider Man Three. Man, finally the government doing its job all over the world. <laughs> Look, we can't give you health care or a living wage or fix your gout or your bad toe, but we can put you in Spider Man. Though everyone gets to be in Spider Man for one second. <laughs> Honestly, I'm fine with that. <laughs> And uh, I know a lot of people, and even myself, was kind of like bumming on the concept at first, where it's like, oh, you know, it's one thing to cast, uh, what is it, Jamie Foxx, because, oh, that's a throwaway joke, ha ha ha, Blue Electra. Oh, you cast Alfred Molina, though, but he's a real actor, so he's going to have to actually be involved in this in some way. But it could still just be a post-credit, it could still just be like a wink and you miss it. it it's probably absolutely going to be that, going to be a quick sequence or something in the movie they oh they go to the the rammy universe and oh look mm. there's there's an an old pudgy tom toby Maguire and, <laughs> and christian stewart uh christian dunst and all that sort of stuff who well, apparently toby Maguire is really pissed off a lot of people in hollywood which is why you don't see him anymore yeah well, he anything. apparently is he's a nightmare to work with <laughs> 
from what I understand, and apparently like a like a real serious gambler and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what is it like uh, that joke in uh, Ocean's Eleven when all those celebrities are playing cards? Yeah. Like apparently that's not a joke. No, yeah, I, I have to imagine. Yeah, to- Topher Grace in that film was is is Toby Maguire. <laughs> Like, literally, that was what they were doing with it. But yeah, holy shit. Uh, so everyone's going to be in that movie, but because everyone's going to be in that movie, we might get Daredevil in that movie, too, to where at first I'm like, oh, this movie's over stuff. That's too many. Oh, Charlie Cox might be in it. Proceed. And it kind of makes sense as well, because Peter would be in some type of legal trouble. Yeah, and yeah. And being, being poor, he'd probably only be able to afford Nelson and Murdoch. Oh, like he gets arrested for being Spider-Man. And then it's like, why well, didn't ask for a lawyer? Parker, your lawyer's here. And then you see Matt Murdock coming in with his stick. He's not even Daredevil. He's just Matt Murdock. He's like, look, I, I understand where you're coming from, kid. Look, I, I help people in these situations. <laughs> that being would be pretty very great. on the nose about him being Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, really, right there. It's like, oh, well, there's a devil in all of us. Well, if I may be the devil's advocate for a minute. <laughs> if, I, if I may dare to be the devil's advocate. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then he's just standing there and you see his shadow but his shadow has horns <laughs> yeah, somehow he don't know how oh like his his hair is sticking up oh sorry about that i was gonna put that down there <laughs> that's something the simpsons would do oh they did it with it mr re- burns <laughs> literally they've done that joke before man you know i thought all lawyers were the devil but this guy <laughs> i call i called your aunt and also i'm keeping your aunt's number because she's super hot and i'm also a sex addict just so you know <laughs> not not only am i daredevil not only am i your lawyer i'm also your new step uncle peter just just so you know <laughs> just th- just throwing that out there <laughs> oh fun stuff but yeah i'm all about that yeah. uh what else do we got oh we got a full-on trailer for falcon and winter soldier and boy does it look good man buddy cop superhero movie with uh anthony mackie and sebastian stan all right yeah it it looks uh fun it looks exciting it looks it looks like it's a real great like uh, like espionage thriller the, mm. the the settings as well like we got a we got a look a kind of a good look at, at madripoor and it looks exactly yes. like how i imagined it would look that's pretty slick obviously we know baron zemo is going to be back in this we see him for a second we also see a new lady villain with a mask is she anybody did i just uh, have a brain fart flag smasher or one uh, like flag smasher oh. men right who, who's, who's funny she's played by erin kellyman who played uh enfys nest in in uh in solo and, uh, and i okay. really like it because she she ends up fighting the villain uh the heroes on the back of a moving truck like she did in solo <laughs> that's okay cool i thought that was her but i also thought i was going senile okay man good for her she's getting all the good <laughs> disney roles yeah She's, she's a very striking actress. She doesn't look like anyone else, so, like, you can't mistake her. <laughs> she looks like a friggin', what is it, like an old English fae, like something from the Book of Kells, <laughs> but brought to real life. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And, uh, again, we know, what is it, uh, Kurt Russell's kid is going to be in this, too, as John Walker. Yeah, yeah we, we haven't seen much of him. We just see that same shot no. of him in the in the football game. We haven't seen anything else. I imagine, yeah, well, I wonder yeah, if which, maybe he goes crazy, like, immediately. <laughs> yeah, does he, like, kill a bunch? But also, like, in a series that seems like it has a lot of villains, is he going to be the main villain? Is he going to be a secondary villain? Or are they going to try and build him up, and then maybe he actually helps Falcon and Winter Soldier, and then maybe they try and spin that off into a U.S. agent show? I could see that. I think it's going to be a, a bunch of different things, where it's like you got Zemo doing his thing, and then he got the flag smashes and whatever's happening with them and then us agent and it all kind of like like uh, yeah like snowballs into like this big event or something yeah a lot of a lot of good stuff this show has a lot of very interesting things going for it and also uh bucky and sam no one has quite agreed who will wield the shield yet because they're all basically just wearing their costumes yeah and their costumes look great that new falcon costume looks awesome it looks really nice. It's not quite his uh, comic counterpart as Captain America, but pretty good. I'm waiting until he goes to like, uh, we well, can't really go to T'Challa, maybe like Shuri mm. or somewhere in Wakanda and gets those light, uh, hard light wings. Yeah, those are good. And they'll get Pim in to do it. Pim will make it for him. <laughs> 
hey, or uh, Wasp there, uh, because she was a fashion designer. Maybe they'll bring that back. We'll bring <laughs> back her just out of the blue. Hey, you know, I was a fashion designer before I disappeared into that realm, the quantum realm, for a bit. <laughs> Uh, then we got the What If trailer, which, man, that looks fucking cool. That looks really dang good, and I th- I think this is this is Chadwick Boseman's last stuff as, it as is. a T'Challa. <laughs> it is, and to think his story is he gets picked up by Yondu instead, and he becomes Star-Lord. Yeah, that looks so cool. That looks so Very cool. Very <laughs> well. We got the Marvel zombies, we got a big guy in Rusty with frickin' uh, Agent Carter and Steve. Yeah, that looks really cool. We got a Doctor Fa- uh, Doctor Strange versing an evil Doctor Strange. Yeah, and of course it's all hosted Tales from the Crypt style by The Watcher. Yeah, voiced by, um, oh, what's his name? Jeffrey Wright. Who is so goddamn good in that role. I hope we actually, if the Watcher ever shows up again in the main movies, and I'm sure he will, I hope Jeffrey Wright does his voice too. I you have to imagine he would. Yeah. I I his little speech he gives is so great, you know, it's like an ask the question, what if? <laughs> just uh just shivers down the spine. That that show's been in development forever, too. Well, I think it's I think it's like twenty something episodes. Like it's not like your oh, wow. usual twelve episodes, because I think they're doing the first two phases of marvel because i think each episode is like a what if on a particular film like what if guardians of the galaxy had black panther instead of uh, star lord mm. i mean i hope all these things succeed but i really hope that one succeeds because it's like hey disney you fucking animation house you it's like if you take your time and resources you can make some really impressive marvel animation yeah i oh i didn't put it on the list but yeah all the all the all the pixar animation stuff they announced here sounds so fucking cool yeah they're doing a lot of really cool shit there where it's like hey zootopia we're bringing that back for a show wouldn't you like a police procedural with talking animals yeah. yes yes i would that movie had a really interesting world yeah yeah that, that um they're doing a big hero six uh, show as well and I, it reminded me because they showed like art and everything from i'm like wow these words were super fucking interesting to look at i'm glad we're getting more of them which so the baymax show is that after the cartoon because there's a big hero (laughs) six cartoon going on right now that's also a sequel is this a different type of sequel what's the deal i don't know i am not it's too sure it's called baymax is this about the baymax that got lost in the other world i don't know i mean Uh, it just looks like it looks like it's going to be shorts though because it's like baymax goes uh, and helps a person and like you couldn't really do a lot with that over like you know 20 minutes or so uh, well, he's doing what he was programmed to do, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh, Chris Evans is Buzz Lightyear. That's yeah. fun, but not Buzz Lightyear the toy. Buzz Lightyear the series that inspired the toy that Andy bought the toy for. Yeah, I like that. And of course, they couldn't get Tim Allen back because he's a horrible monster of a human being. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and always was back <laughs> when he was dealing coke and screwing people over to the cops. Why did people let him have a career as long as they did when even back then the joke was he was a bad guy who gave up his fellow drug dealers? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but hey, we replaced him with the most wholesome man on earth, Chris Evans. <laughs> Chris Evans never hurt nobody. Yeah, Chris he, Evans can pull a number from anybody. Chris Evans doesn't roll on his drug dealers. <laughs> no, no, no. Chris <laughs> Evans keeps that shit close to the chest and ain't gonna talk to you, pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Also, I-, I like that Buzz Lightyear thing, too, because it reminds me how awesome that Buzz Lightyear of Star Command cartoon yeah. show was. And-, and I fucking hope some of those characters show up in this because it means someone remembers them. I doubt they will. I but... hope this is... This is um this is uh uh popular so then we get a woody version which is basically just like an animated western yeah it's it's the roundup gang it's him and uh prospector pete and jesse and everything oh man they could do it with actual puppets like in the thing (laughs) get like fucking well i was gonna say it's disney so they wouldn't get Leica to do it but like Leica if they just stop motioned that shit (laughs) Yeah, just keep doing that. The the real versions of all these great toys yeah, oh, and the stories you didn't know. That's really man. That's great too because that kills like so many birds with like one stone at Pixar. We want to do more Toy Story, but the story's done. We'll do this then. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't. I mean, I guess they kind of have with that. Was it Forky or whatever his name was? But like set yeah set, yeah. Them, set stories in that world. 
Yeah, that's true. They did a couple of shorts that were really good, like the one where they're at the motel and the one where mm-hmm. they like fight like a bunch of like street shark dinosaur toys. Yeah, they're yeah. like pretty pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good shit. Uh all right, what do we got after that? Uh uh, oh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which, yes, is definitely a reference to the Star Wars holiday special. Yes, James Gunn was quick to say that. And, um, yeah, we're, we're getting it's a live action uh, holiday special that's going to be filmed when Guardians of the Galaxy 3 films. Um, and it's so going to be good. released the Christmas before that film. Yeah, 2022. Yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to that. That's cool. I, I'd love if, 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 if this is something Disney does now where, like, we had the Star Wars one. Mm -hmm. um and we get like a marvel one and then maybe like a disney one and all these different things it's it's beautiful too because it's also showing like look we don't take ourselves too seriously here we have fun isn't this fun isn't this nice and also man i hope it's just like the star wars holiday special i hope we get jefferson airplane doing weird musical interludes i hope drax has cg porn i hope it's filmed exactly like did you ever see the um the music video that Gunn did for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with David Hasselhoff. Yes, yeah. yes, I did. Just film it like that. Yes, please. I hope it's just like, I hope it's Yondu reading a book. All right, everybody, sit around and we're going to read this book about the Earth Day Christmas. <laughs> uh, there's so many funny places they could go with that. And also like, hey, you get Guardians of the Galaxy on your app. How cool is that? Yeah. I think that's very cool uh all right it does feel kind of weird there where it's like hey we're doing a christmas special two years from now yeah yeah well, I, I guess like um it gets to build hype and it's a live action one so they can't exactly pump it out especially not this year with coronavirus no, they couldn't not at all now the next one is really interesting and i would not have pegged this one a secret invasion show starring nick fury and tallow so i'm like wait so is this like a buddy cop spy piece between these two as they try and root out aliens on earth is this men in black did you men in black me this sounds exactly like that and i'm, I'm really happy it's a tv show and not a movie because secret invasions yeah. i imagine it's going to leak into the movies because that's it's a big Probably. fucking event um but i like that the the main story will be seen in the tv show man this it's hard to believe they've had samuel l jackson a part of this universe for so long and he shows up for everything, but he's never led a thing until right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm so happy. And that he's just so fucking game for anything. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do a miniseries. Fuck yeah, I will. And that Ben Mendelsohn's also like, yeah, I'll put the makeup on. Yeah, I, I, I'm so glad we're getting more Ben Mendelsohn. I'm so He's happy. just wonderful. And also, too, they've totally set it up that fury and uh what is it talos and the other scrolls know each other and have hung out since captain marvel yeah and there's also the tease that was at the end of um spider-man far from home where fury Mm. was off world setting up maybe sword yeah what was he doing up there yeah is this a way to get sword into the universe is this a backdoor sword show will abigail brand show up now that we can do x-men yeah will it be a proper abigail brand not the one that was on agents of shield uh oh i forgot that <laughs> she forgot died that she died in that after like a couple of episodes that's right they killed her off really unharmoniously you're absolutely right that did have ah, i like model decoy <laughs> we set those up it's fine anyone who died can just be a life model decoy it's all good <laughs> see see we're learning the lessons from the comics everyone yeah Ironheart is also getting a TV series, which between this, Miss Marvel, uh, what is it, Kate Bishop and Hawkeye, I think it's pretty obvious that we're building up to some sort of champions, Young Avengers style but, team up piece. But, but Joel, everyone told me Ironheart was a complete failure and wouldn't succeed. Jeez, it's almost like the, you know, uh, what is it? The, the, uh, what is it? The, the goalposts are moving now. It's almost like what these people think in their small little comic worlds don't really matter to the bigger multimedia machine. It's almost as if everything Marvel had done for years, planting the seeds of these younger, ethnically diverse characters is all paying off now in the bigger, uh, <laughs> what is it? Entertainment content creation machine or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for it, for an Iron Heart show. I know it was coming eventually uh i'm glad it's coming now we also she uh riri has been cast she's being played by uh dominique uh thorn yeah thorn Mm -hmm. great looking casting yeah and um and this show also ties into what don Cheadle is doing next 
yeah, finally Don Sheetle's War Machine gets to take center stage because we're doing fucking Armor Wars, Armor Wars, right on. I never thought we'd be getting Armor Wars. Neither did I, and I love this idea where it's like, yeah, sure, we killed off uh, Iron Man. Don't worry, it's not the end of those armors, though. You're going to get all the fucking armors. Oh, Don't yeah, you worry. Well, someone's coming and stealing his technology still. It doesn't matter if the man's dead. I imagine, goddamn, what's his name? Um, Arno. Uh, I, yeah, he... Uh, oh. That's a good thing. I had never considered Arno being involved in this. I don't think they would fucking do that. They won't. F- that, no, that's, that's such an ass pull in the comics as well. It is. Like, that's cartoonish, even by comic book standards. I am his evil brother you didn't know about. Oh, really? You yeah. were doing the evil brother? Tony really wasn't a Stark. He was an alien, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's that's still kind of stupid in comic books as it stands now. Uh, no, I, I think you were going to say, uh, what is it, uh, Stain's Kid. I was going to say that as well, but I was also going to say Justin Hammer might be coming back. Oh, that's good, too, just to have more Justin Hammer and things. Yeah, more Sam Rockwell is fine. It, it, it's and good. It, I, I see Sam Rockwell, I watch. Just just add Sam Rockwell. It's like uh, brown sugar. Just add a little Sam Rockwell in there, and now your <laughs> recipe's better. <laughs> Yeah, another guy who feels slightly underused, but a guy who also feels like he's genuinely up for anything as well. Yeah, I'm, and I imagine, like, yeah, he'd be coming back as, if they were to bring him back as a main villain, because, like, he was the first one to kind of steal Stark's technology. I could see him yeah. trying to do it again now that the man is dead. Haha, Tony's dead, I will steal his shit, and Rhodey's like, nah, dog, no you won't. <laughs> you forgot about me, man. What do you think they'll do with Roxxon? Yeah, there is going to be Roxxon. We saw Roxxon in the background of the Loki trailer, didn't we? Yes. Yes, yeah, we yeah, yeah we did. So there you go. I mean, Roxxon's definitely coming. Could be Roxxon trying to steal it. Who knows? Yeah, I imagine with, um like, uh, like humans and everything starting to make a, a coming, I imagine we're going to see mm. Alchemax as well. Yeah, true enough. Yeah, there's lots of evil corporations to go around. Uh, we got I Am Groot, which is going to be a series of animated shorts starring Groot and other interesting characters from the Marvel Universe. I told my mom about this, and she is very excited about the I Am Groot show. She's like, can I watch that now? I'm surprised, yeah, I'm surprised they hadn't done this sooner. Cause, Such I mean, a no-brainer. Like, there isn't a lot of dialogue. <laughs> you could just, no. you could basically just uh, take the dialogue from the films and just put it over, like, yeah. animation. <laughs> no vin diesel is such a serious actor i must re-record all of these lines it is the only way <laughs> look you know my i am groot is very different from i am groot <laughs> see it was kind of a question that time <laughs> slightly different and again too i just love the idea that disney is doing more animation with these characters which is what they should always have been doing yeah yeah branching out into animation and animation that's probably gonna be like canon as well yeah absolutely he's really fun uh, yeah. yeah uh next up we have more word on the ant-man three cool it's gonna be ant-man and the wasp in quantum mania yeah, they're gonna go they're gonna, tiny... be, gonna fight kang for the for the money for the money um bank <laughs> money in the bank <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's me kang the conqueror calling you out scott lang you me at quantum mania in the main event <laughs> Man, I really hope that the movie is that. I hope it's that stupid. <laughs> well, I, I love the name. I fucking love Quantum Mania. I, I, so I just like as well that they, they announced that King the Conqueror is going to be the villain. And I love I love just comparing it to like the other two Ant-Man films where it's like, oh, he fights the evil inverse of himself. And then he fights the maybe a shady v- businessman and like an assassin. And then now he fights a guy who travels through time and like a fuck, fucking god yeah fucks with time it's like that that's ant-man in general in the mcu he went from doing all that to like like punching thanos and punch yeah like growing huge and punching leviathans and everything it it's literally the little franchise that could mm-hmm. and you know by introducing kang here there's so many more like feelers and tentacles to everything else in the marvel universe they're doing right now that this this will not be the last you see of kang and this is going to probably set up so much other shit yeah, kang opens the door to stuff like like iron lad and exiles and the mm. council of kangs and time travel and all sorts yep. of shit uh fucking apocalypse even if you want in ancient egypt and everything else because he's been around that long yep reed richards dr doom a lot of fantastic four stuff which hey there's gonna be more of that too didn't you know yeah we're getting a fantastic four movie by john watts 
man, that's cool. Good for him. Yeah, I, I imagine they they inked it because um back when back when we had those like a couple of weeks or a month or so when we didn't know Spider Man was going to come back, um there were rumors that Watts had inked to deal with Marvel for another Marvel film, and yeah, no one yeah. knew what it was, but it wasn't something Spider Man related. And I guess right. this was it. I guess he had there a pitch. You go. Yeah, I guess he did. And I mean, considering what he's done with all of his other work, I'm really interested to see his take on Fantastic Four. Yeah, I mean, if he can bring like what he did to Spider-Man, that kind of like down to earth, sort of like Mm -hmm. normal feeling to the character. Because the the first thing, the, the, the Richards family, they're a family. Yeah. And then they're superheroes. So yeah, I'd be interested to see what he can do with that dynamic. And of course, the question that every, you know, Marvel movie fan has been asking, you know, when you introduce the Fantastic Four, have they always been in the universe and we just haven't seen them? Or are they just coming back and just becoming a thing? What are you going to do? I'd like if they were already a thing, they like disappeared in like the 60s or something into like quantum time or some some something the negative zone or something and it didn't age them or anything so they come back that's and they're kind of like it's kind of like that captain america sort of man out of time thing right because they're from this yeah that's been my pitch forever just like do the opposite of planet of the apes yeah and then obviously of course while victor von doom stayed behind on earth and the reason we need you all back now is that your old college roommate has taken over a small (laughs) uh what is it uh, eastern european country and now it's like north korea and we can't get anyone in and out and he's been saying for a decade he'll only talk to richards only talk to richards (laughs) so you're richard so you guys want to work on that for us thanks (laughs) And also figure out what the world's going on. Reed's a smart guy. He'd be around for a couple minutes. Like, yeah, I figured it out. Or like, ooh, we were so advanced just in the tower. You guys have just now caught up to us. <laughs> like, we were actually hoarding so much super technology you didn't even know about. Yeah. That would be something. Also, like, man, won't it be great to see the thing again? And maybe the thing won't look stupid this time? Yeah, and maybe the thing will actually, like talk like how i envisioned the thing to actually talk and act like how he actually acts in the comics paul giamatti is the thing (laughs) (laughs) hey i'd be fine with that that's not bad casting at all there's a lot of really good bill Bill burr is the thing (laughs) also not too bad actually yeah i'm fucking walking over here johnny yeah i I still think that bill burr should be cast as uncle ben (laughs) <laughs> ah fuck you peter let me die you said you was a chess club you piece of shit <laughs> ah your whole generation's weak don't get me started on michelle obama oh god there he goes again on michelle obama <laughs> peter why is it always michelle obama with you uncle ben ah, i'm dead <laughs> that would be funny bit casting <laughs> joey coco diaz is <laughs> just dies of a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah so it's super cool that the fantastic four is a thing and also gonna be a thing before uh x-men yeah well i imagine this is probably going to be the gateway this all this all mm. like and I, I imagine like like x-men just recently finished up with new mutants and dark phoenix it's been a little bit since the fantastic four so true with X-Men, they know they have a ready-made franchise there that they can just sit on it and let people miss it. Yeah. Oh, n- not only that, I, you, you know Feige has, like, a board somewhere in his office that just has oh, yeah. all of, like, the plans they want to... We're going to do Krakoa, and we're going to do all of this cool <laughs> shit. Man, wouldn't that be some shit? How come we haven't heard of the X-Men in the uh, new movie universe? Oh, because they've been living on Krakoa in, in secret this whole time. I'd love that if we start, just start getting hints of some weird island just appearing out of nowhere. And it's like, oh, it's filled with fucking mutants. And oh, they're they're all fucking weirdos in their sex island. Yeah, you just, you just steal a thing from modern comics. Why not? <laughs> Again, like we've mentioned it before, but mutants are so easy. How did we not know mutants exist? Because Charles Xavier used his powers to make you all forget. Yeah, or that had you, and as well as like you may, might have mistaken, you know, people getting powers from like accidents as mutants and stuff like that. True. You thought we were inhumans. Actually, inhumans didn't happen. We we made that happen in your mind. None of that was actually real. <laughs> that was the real inhumans versus X-Men. Yeah, that's what it was. We put it all on them. 
And uh, I guess the last piece of news here, which actually I kind of jumped around it, but uh, they finally said who Christian Bale is going to be playing in uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, and it's God the goddamn God Butcher. Yeah, we all thought he was going to play Dario Agar, but yeah, he's going to be Gore the God Butcher, which I think we can take to mean that he's probably not going to be on screen that much. He's probably going to be some sort of like CGI monster well, creation. No, you see, because uh, Christian Bale really gets into roles, he actually went into outer space <laughs> and became God the God Butcher. Gore the God Butcher. He yeah. went and killed a bunch of Thors and he inherited this gods. power and everything. <laughs> He, he lived alone on a planet for thousands yep. of years to really get in the role and go crazy and become the world's most militant atheist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate these fucking guys. You know, it's funny, too, because clearly Taika Waititi had read the Gore of the God Butcher saga because literally in the commentary for, uh, what is it, Ragnarok, he's like, oh, and there's, uh, what is it, uh, there's the Necro Sword. Comic fans will know what that is. <laughs> Which technically, if that's the Necro Sword, then that also means Null exists in this universe too. Yeah. Can we get Null, please? Please. Yeah. Just don't let Sony deal with it. Just... No. Yeah. Take it from them before they can use it. <laughs> let's let's face it too. That's also why they're bringing back all those other Spider Man and having this whole multiversal concept. It's not because oh, uh, Spider Verse was such a masterpiece. I'm sure this is some deal they struck with Sony to be like, look, there's other universes and other perfectly valid Spider people out there you can use. Please give us Tom Holland back. Yeah, the the the, the prime Spider Man for more, yes, for prime. all intents and purposes. Prime, prime for a reason. Look, you can do whatever Venom, Morbius, Sinister Six, because apparently they're really fucking still dedicated to making that happen. Yeah, but even then, they might still be in the MCU because you've got fucking Michael Keaton and Mobius, of all things. <laughs> for a minute, you got me for a day. Go. <laughs> Better shoot everything you need right now. <laughs> also, so hard to get, uh, what is it, Jared Leto back from his sex island. Yeah, they're going to be filming that next, the next sequel on that island. <laughs> it's going to be video conferencing in morbius 2 to the island <laughs> spider island or something oh yeah yeah there you go we'll call it's not quite spider island <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that just about does it that's everything that went down in the marvel conference call and uh, or marvel disney conference call and a uh, holy shit what a what a torrent of new movies and tv shows and experiences and interconnected universes we can be watching yeah and that's just the marvel and star wars stuff they had a bunch of like uh national geographic stuff that all sounds really yeah. cool they got a jacques cousteau series coming out that looks really awesome nice uh they're, they're following uh chris hemsworth around as he tries to beat up aging um we, I'm, I'm okay with we, that they're, they're also following will smith around on his midlife crisis as he, oh, as he yeah, goes yeah. and like puts his face in volcanoes and whatnot tries to make his son more famous yeah 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 you gotta have you gotta have a batman suit like like uh what's his name who's that travis scott there you go just a pure white batman suit that you wear to weddings for some reason <laughs> um did you also see that they're including now star in disney plus are they actually do you get star now um, when I'm, does that take effect i'm not sure i think they said february i'm not, again it's i think one of those things where it's rolled out in certain parts of the world and then other parts get it a little later i think we're lucky and we get it like with disney plus with everyone else that's good that's good because i tried star out for a little bit on amazon because that's how i watched that nexium documentary mm -hmm. that you recommended to me yeah well it's it's not stars it's um a new thing called star it's like all oh. their um 20th century fox stuff so like uh die hard oh. and alien and all their tv shows like mayans and right. the americans and stuff it's all going to go on disney plus and it's going to be in a um uh like, like a mature content section that you actually have oh, to opt makes into so it stops kids okay. from watching you know alien <laughs> that's that's pretty dope but mommy mommy the alien is here in these marvel <laughs> comics see <laughs> Well, shit, little Billy, I guess you can. I guess I don't have a fucking leg to stand on, do I? <laughs> and and as Space Lord is, is quick to say, they're making an alien TV show as well with the guy from, uh, the guy that did Legion. That makes a lot of sense, actually. These things probably should have been TV shows a long time ago. Yeah. And now that the money and technology is there. Yeah, well, I imagine they'll probably be using the same stuff that uh, the Mandalorian did. They talked about that for a little bit as well, how they're building much more 
building a bunch more of the of what they call the volumes in like Sydney and Canada and mm. all over the world. So they're getting star. Are they also getting Hulu too? I heard rumors that they were thinking of patching Hulu I, into that too. Which I kind of tuned out. Yeah, do. I kind of tuned out in that part because they rolled that in with the ESPN stuff where they they have like a pack or something where you you, yeah, can, you pay extra and you get it or something. Because like here's the thing, I would Hulu is the only one I don't have right now. And I would love some Hulu for like Pen One Five and like all those other mm-hmm. shows. Because if I'm paying for Disney Plus anyway, it makes sense to roll that. And if they did that, if they rolled all that stuff together, then they'd probably be able to stand almost shoulder and shoulder with Netflix at that point for all the stuff that they have under their banner. Yeah, I think they are. Or it's going to be like a separate pack that you can choose to get. Okay, I might have to look into that then, because there's definitely some Hulu shows I'd uh, I'd fuck with just because. <laughs> Don't they have, like, all of Saturday Night Live, like, in the entire history on Hulu? I think so. I don't think we even get Hulu here. I haven't even checked it, because all their stuff sort of goes out to, like, all our different, like, Netflix and stands and Amazon Primes and whatnot. Yeah, Canada is much the same in that regard. Apparently, if you're a former British colony, that's what happens. (laughs) Best Hulu shows. What am I missing on Hulu right now? Uh, Oh, no, The Runaways. I ain't missing that. (laughs) uh the handmaid's tale i wasn't watching that that's so a I good fucking enjoy. show though is it okay yeah pen one five which you and i both enjoy okay good girls which is on our netflix actually right now uh okay woke is on there woke is actually a really funny show i haven't seen uh, that one. My, it's really funny it's got a ton of our favorite uh what is it african-american voice actors and oh, comedians nice all doing the voices of this dude's hallucinations and the best <laughs> joke that this this will make you watch it there is a bit there where the lead star who was a black cartoonist he goes to a party for like other affluent uh black creators but to make sure he's cool enough to come into the party they're like we have to test you and uh what is it they show him a book and they're like what's this guy's name and it's ta Coates. <laughs> And I got it. I'm like, woohoo, I get it because he writes comics too. I could go to the fun party. I got the name. <laughs> I had to figure that out for myself. Woo. Uh, yeah, so that, it's a very funny show. Check it out. Yeah. Um, what, they announced. Oh, um, um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's getting like, like 400 new se- seasons as well under Disney. Hey, good for them. <laughs> I can't believe that that's like it can be classed as a Disney show. <laughs> I know, right? It's technically involved. <laughs> also, I think that helps shut people up too, where it's like, oh, they only care about kids and family stuff. Now they don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, th- this was like a big thing, uh, this whole star thing, because now it's like all their mature stuff. They've got something for everyone now. Yeah, they really, really and do. And it really and makes uh, me wonder how many people are actually going to subscribe now, because at the moment, they've already got like 87 million subscribers. They actually beat, because mm-hmm. they thought they were going to get that 80, 80 million in 2024 so they beat it by four years (laughs) (laughs) wow well you know i guess on that note everyone we've been talking for almost two full hours but we covered literally everything (laughs) so we hope you enjoyed it we hope you had as much fun as we did i guess in the comment section down below tell us what's the thing that you're the most excited for because lord knows uh there's as matt said something for everybody there is that there really is like if you you want to watch fucking documentaries you got national geographic you want to watch action you got your marvel and your star wars you want sci-fi you got your star wars you got you want horror you got your aliens and all that sort of stuff everything plus all plus all your favorite cartoons you grew up with those as absolutely well. yeah So there you go, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this week. This was a lot of fun. Again, we'll be back next week with something different. If we're not live, it's because we decided to record some manner of Christmas commentary. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll end this one right now. Be sure to check out our sponsor, livefit.ca. Be sure to check my Instagram the next coming days as I'm going to try and give away 100 bucks worth of food. If you're a patron, you'll get to listen to this again and check out the audio for it first before anyone else. You can do that for as little as a dollar a month. You know, Matt and I really appreciate that, especially as it gets to be holiday time and we got gifts and Christmas puddings and everything else that need to be bought. So yeah. good on you all. I, I'm happy, though, because I've finished all my Christmas shopping. I did it earlier this year, so I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm basically done. My dad is easy to shop for. He just needs shit for like, you know, 
what is it just for like work and easy stuff that he won't buy himself yeah. like you know like plain white t-shirts mm -hmm. and everything and like work gloves that's easy yeah uh my mom i did buy something i amazoned her something nice and hopefully that'll be here before christmas they gave me the like oh anytime between the 22nd of december and the 5th of january yeah. and i'm like oh come on I, I did the amazon thing as well and i did the gift wrap thing and that arrived last week and actually came gift wrapped and everything which i'm really happy about oh shit yeah i should have tried that that's good yeah i'd, I'd good never idea. done it before i'm thinking you know what i'll give it a try with christmas it's only like it was only like an extra two three dollars and it came out really good that's good that's good but uh yeah that's basically all i gotta do because i'm not seeing any other family <laughs> and i'm not going anywhere so this that's is the good the thing about this I... year the smaller christmas presents smaller christmas yeah yeah you have uh you finally have a reason to do it and honestly I don't want for anything either. I bought Cyberpunk, which was the big game, and I bought that for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and anyone else who wants to get me anything can just look at my fucking Amazon wish list if they want, <laughs> so they don't have to talk to me. Hey, buy more. I Gundams. got an air. <laughs> yeah, more Gundams, more air fryers. Also, buy me Pokemon cards because apparently those are really big again and actually are selling for hundreds and hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of, of dollars. dollars. Have you, yeah. Have you have you seen that, Matt? Is yeah. that not fucking insane? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why this started back up again. <laughs> I, I think one of the one of the Pauls, I don't know if it was Logan or whatever, but apparently he dropped like over a hundred grand on a Charizard and that like supercharged the fucking industry. Oh fuck. So now people are selling off all their old I dug out my old ones actually to see if I had any good ones and like I I fucking like given them away over the years, sold them, yeah. traded them for fucking Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which feels really dumb now. I have most of a rocket set, most of a base set. And a couple hollows that I think might be worth sixty bucks, but I'd have to get them graded first. <laughs> you go put them in the little in the little uh, little baggies, and then seal, yep. vacuum seal them, and everything. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a dude on YouTube. His name is Leonhart. Apparently, he quit being a lawyer to open Pokemon cards <laughs> professionally on YouTube, Fuck. and he has like over two million subscribers. Jesus Christ! That he must have like weighed up the the and realized it was going to make him more money yes Fuck yes he did me. and like people send him shit to open on his show so Jesus. he commands like one of the biggest collections ever and he can actually like move the market like i watched a whole like stock thing and be like no see these youtubers are important because they control the majority of the super rare cards wow. so they can like let them out in the market and they can bring them back and i'm like this is this is madness and also i want in on it because this combines two of my favorite things childhood nostalgia and gambling <laughs> So if you wake up tomorrow and I'm suddenly a new Pokemon card YouTuber, you'll all know why. <laughs> Uh-oh, Joel fell down that hole, everybody. <laughs> and on that note, I really do mean the show is over. So goodbye, everybody. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.